Paul, we're curious what prompted you to make a road trip movie where you say on your website, four guys stuffed in a small van with rolls of film, mm. seeing where the road would take them. What prompted this? That sounds like quite a good line, actually. Who came up with that? Um, um, what prompted us to make this film? Um, basically, curiosity at the time as to how Americans felt about America. And, and really, I was curious about that because I didn't know how I felt about America at that time. I was struggling. I've always loved America ever since I was a kid, you know. And um, at that time, I was sort of struggling with the economic downturn and the way the this American dream had sort of fallen in on itself and the sort of hell-bent pursuit of material goods, consumption, all these things supposed to make you happy. And it was like, well, hang on, this isn't quite working, is it? It's just fallen flat on its face, that whole notion. And um, I wasn't too sure how I was feeling about America, but I thought before I really formed an opinion, I should perhaps speak to more of the people out of, out of America outside of the areas that I spend most of my time, i.e. New York, Los Angeles, East and West Coast, those areas. So I sort of wanted to get into the sort of the heartland of America and speak to the people out there, especially the ones that get that air, those areas that get such a hard, you know, they get a lot of rap about, oh, you know, just flyover country and Bible Belt and, you know, Rust Belt and stuff like that. No, there's something going on there. I want to speak to these people. And so I felt if I spoke to those people, the main the people of the heart of America, I'd be able to form a better opinion of how I felt about America at that time. So that's what I did. We just got on the road and um, with those rolls of film and, and, and drove across America and interviewed lots of very interesting characters. Well, did you have it in your mind for a little bit? Like, oh, you know, I'd like to do this. And then you kind of wrestled with it. And then you said, no, I'm making this. No. OK, well, I'll answer both those. OK, sure. Um, so after the economic downturn, I was very curious, particularly um, about the, uh, the, 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 how Americans were feeling about the country and, the, as I said, the pursuit of the American dream. Um, so that's pretty much, it was after that downturn that I decided, like, let's, you know, I want to go and speak to the people of America. And um, it was all done on a bit of a whim, really, because uh, I had this sort of whimsical notion of, yeah, oh, I'll drive across America and oh, I'll interview people and that's going to be easy, isn't it? And in hindsight, that kind of was the easiest bit. Um, it's the actually putting the film together afterwards, which is the really challenging bit. The, the drive across America, which we did over a period of a month, was, uh, that was the easy bit. That was enjoyable and pleasant. It's a road trip across America, hey? Eh? You know, it's lots of fun. Um, and so I had this sort of whimsical notion that this would be a great idea. Um, I just moved back into, I'd recently moved back into a neighborhood in Brooklyn I hadn't lived in for a long time and I'd got to know this Australian guy that ran this cafe called Smooch in, in Fort Greene in Brooklyn. And, um, and I was just sort of getting to know this guy, I knew him for about a month, and I said, I'm thinking about driving across America and interviewing people. And he went, well, I'll come with you, mate. <laughs> I was like, I um, don't know you very well, but I don't know, we've been hanging out. And he was kind of feeling the same. He'd been in America for a similar amount of time as I had. So I thought, well, you know, I only live once. And uh, so um, it was literally about two weeks later, we were on the road and um, doing it. So it was a very short period of time between the inception, idea inception, some Aussie guy saying, I'll come with you, <laughs> and being on the road with the, uh, an old cameraman friend of mine, a sound friend of mine, in this, stuffed in this van, rolls of film, and seeing where the road took us. You know? So yeah, that was that. And the romance of it never wore off within that month's the time. The bromance still <laughs> continues. No, we're best of mates. We actually made it through this, uh, the whole experience, not just the trip itself, but the making of the film itself, which as I said, that's the really challenging bit. Sure. And no, um, we're very, uh, very, very good friends. And um, yeah, it's been great. It's been a great experience. It's been one of those things where you think, oh yeah, why not? And then you're suddenly like, oh wow, I'm glad I did that, you know? What did uh, the making of This American Journey teach you about people? You know, you're dealing with the heartland yeah. versus New York and L.A., which you're so used to. Well, what the film taught us, well, it taught us things on, uh, many things on many levels, but I think one of the main things that, you know, is born out of watching the film is, the, the, you know, how, how, how quickly we are to judge people uh, based on their appearance and their location. Well, I'm here and here they're talking like that and they're dressed like that, so oh, I bet we're going to get a bit of this, you know. But if you actually sit down and you, you know, spend a little moment talking, listening to people, it's amazing what you'll actually find. And it's not that far you know, beneath the surface. And yet, obviously, for the sake of uh, a lot of people who like to divide, label and divide people so that people can obviously be controlled a bit more easily, manipulated more easily, um, you know, a lot of this um, sort of um, di divisiveness and labeling is encouraged. And what we discovered you know, getting out there is that we've got more in common than we have different. 
no matter how we talk or what we dress like or what you know union or association we belong to or whatever people have got more in common than they have different you know and when times are tough like they have been in this country to me it makes more sense to dwell on what on on the good things that we have in our lives um in order to get out of the uh the mire you know so it's like well let's dwell on the good things that we've got and what we might have in common in order to sort of get out of these difficult times as opposed to well it's your fault you did this you did that and well you're just those kind of people so what are you going to do you know it's finger pointing and nonsense and you're just stuck in the same place so to me it's like you know what we've got a lot more in common than we have different we're all in this together so let's try and get out of it together by dwelling on the positive and that's what I think you know we learnt ourselves in in this film is that you know you, we, you see examples of that in the film and it also really illuminates y yourself because because you like you know, uh, it shows you, it showed me anyway how much I judge people and presume them to be a, a certain type of person. And then you sit there and go, whoa, I guess I'm a bit of a numpty then, aren't I? Because that just wasn't the case. And that's something that people say a lot about when they watch the film. And it's, you know, it's really uplifting and inspiring as well because you've got people in very unexpected places, unexpected times, saying these really sort of like heartening things. And you look at it and you're like, you know what? This thing is all right. This country's all right. This, with these people, with this American spirit intact, like it is, people will learn. It's a, it's a young country, and people will learn from these experiences. We all learn from experiences, good or bad, and that's what the country's doing now, and that's what the people of this in the film show us. You know, and you walk away going like, I think it's going to be all right. You know, you're like, oh great. You know, and it's the people of the film that, that our interviewees that show us that. And I see from your website that you said that you had never really done interviews before, and so you Googled well, how to interview people, which yeah. I thought was great. What did you find out? And also, too, you took psychology in school? Yeah, I studied that? psychology of acting, spiritual psychology of acting. Oh, so uh, that was that. Yeah. Um, well, it was very strange because the only person that I had interviewed ever prior to this film was, in fact, the Dalai Lama which was a bit strange to have that on the resume for a one-time interview wow. So, um, and that's because I was involved in a documentary uh, with some people um, and uh, John Sally, the basketball player, and Gustavo Santaleo, the, 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 the music composer, and myself were sort of chronicled on a journey across India through various sort of religious um, um, uh, places. We were in, you know, Hindu country, we were in Sikh country, we were in Muslim country, you know, and um, it culminated with meeting the Dalai Lama and being able to ask him a few questions. And so that's the only person I'd interviewed before. And, uh, and I say interview, it was two, two questions, but um, this was six months later, and we're thinking, well, now we're going to sort of, you know, travel across America and ask lots of questions. And I just remember. Think, I remember the one thing that stuck in my mind was the how do you feel about, you know, so how do you feel about the state of the country at the moment? Not like, what do you think of this or what do you think of this? So there was something about, and then, and it, it was the how do you feel or, or what makes you feel that way? I just remember hanging on to those words uh, in terms of interviewing. I just remember the Google, and that, oh, how, how do you feel about, <laughs> what makes you feel that way? Okay, remember that, remember that. But regardless of whatever I may or may not have discovered on Googling, uh, the interviewing technique. The one thing that was important to me at that time was that I didn't want to go in there with my own agenda. I didn't want to be sitting there, you know, no matter who I am, wanting to sort of put my whole agenda onto, well, what I feel about the country and how what I think people are thinking. I just wanted to be like, okay, so you're an NRA member. Right. Okay. Um, so how do you feel about, you know, the state of things? How do you feel about blah, 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 blah. Um, and just no matter what people said, no matter um, how um, uplifting or inspiring or, or subversive or controversial it might have been, just to be like, okay, so you feel that way. Um, what, where, 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 what makes you feel that way? You know, how, where, what, what do you, um, what do you take from that? And, and you know, just being open and receptive and not trying to put too much of my stuff onto it. And at times that was a bit challenging, but ultimately much more interesting. So I can sit with myself, I know what I think all day long, I can sit wherever I want, sit and talk about what I think. Terribly boring, <laughs> but much more interesting to find out, oh gosh, so you think that way? So how, why is that then? And just keep people, just keep opening them up, you know? And then, then we had some interesting interviews. 
it's almost like being a therapist in some ways. Oh, I don't know if I'd make a very good therapist, <laughs> but um, it's um, it was certainly you know people do like to talk, and all we did on those because it obviously was a bit strange, I guess, in the middle of Arkansas, an Australian and a and an Englishman. Uh, you know, rolling up and going, excuse me, we're making this interview, we're making this documentary about, you know, America. Da, da, da. Uh, well, who are you, boy? Where you come from? Yeah, I don't know what you do. A little, but I found that, you know, if you just look people in the eye and just say to them what it is you're doing, and uh, it'd be lovely to talk to you, you know, people are oh, okay. And then you just initially ask them, yeah, how's life around here? And, um, you know, people become quite open for a good chit chat. So that's what we found. Which interview was the most surprising to you? I mean, I have many favorites of the ones that I saw, but which, which one really blew you away in terms of what was said, the, the mindset? Well, I think the NRA uh, gentleman, uh, Kyle, is the one that you know still gets me and, and seems to have an effect on other people because there we are outside a gun show with a guy, big guy, you know, with his gun on his side and his NRA hat on and everything. And you're thinking, oh God, here we go, the gun show thing, you know. And this guy was amazing. He was an environmentalist. <laughs> like one of his lines is, you know, you don't need to sling lead down a range to get your point across, sit down, buckle up, have a coffee. You know, what do politicians really know about places they're trying to take over and affect in the world, you know? Be a bit more um, open to other cultures. And, you know, it was like some lefty tree hugging liberal sitting there. But he wasn't necessarily one or the other. He was just present and just thinking, well, why do we do this? And you don't need to sling lead down a range. It's like, and it wasn't necessarily that he was one thing or another to be labeled. He was just this guy just making sense and, and just being kind of logical, I guess. And But, you know, it exposed the way that we approach those situations. We're going, oh, here we go, NRA gun show. But then this guy going, well, no, if you got sun and solar and you can use the sun's energy to kind of uh, bring some light for the night then that kind of makes sense doesn't it just use the daytime solar bit to look after the night bit and you're like yeah I guess that makes sense then you don't have to go and trounce around and do that oil stuff in kind of places that we shouldn't really be in and that's just what he was saying and it seemed to make sense what he was saying you know so he was he was just you know uh, he was fascinating but who were your favorites? What, what stuck out for you? For me, I think the teacher was one of my favorites. Kevin, um, the teacher in Louisville? The one who, who said that he has the kids start with a mantra before he opens the class of, I'm not my neighborhood, I'm yeah. not my mother, and I'm not my father. Yeah. And actually that ties into one of the questions because he talks about America being a land of opportunity, but he says sometimes some opportunities are swayed more in favor toward others than than some of the children that he was dealing with. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, do you feel that the way things are now, it's almost similar to the British class system where there's less mobility than there you was? You know, okay. There are clearly um, more privileged situations into which one can be born or, or find yourself living in. And clearly there is um, more opportunity for others according to those things, those aspects. However, personally, I, I mean, look, I'll, you know, my dad's not Kenneth Branagh and my mum's not Emma Thompson, and I'm an actor, you know, and I'm sort of doing all right in these Hollywood hills and stuff. And my dad was a chef, and my mum was a secretary, basically, <clears throat> and lived in little small towns in England at the end of the cul de sac with. You know, Tupperware parties happening in 1977, thinking, is this it? Does it? Okay, interesting. <laughs> um, um, and um, I think it's easy um, for us at any time to sort of rest in a story that we create as individuals or as a neighborhood or as a city or as a society or a country or whatever and just say, well, this is my life and so it's not fair for me and, you know, it's all right for those people on the other side of the tracks. And I think, I mean, every day is a bit of a miracle, isn't it? And I just think that if we think more about what is possible and we spend more time thinking about what we have, therefore, and then be grateful about that and therefore create a more positive sort of energy about ourselves because we're like, oh, I've got all my arms and legs. That's fantastic. It's a pretty good day, actually. I haven't got any nasty disease. It's all right. You know, oh, I wish I had a bigger this or a better that or more of this. But you know what? In the meantime, it's all right. I'm quite happy. 
I'm fortunate, I'm breathing, I'm living, I'm seeing this whole like miraculous thing that's happening around me. And then you just sort of feel a bit better and then I think there's a great propensity for sort of more positive things to come into your life as a result of just feeling better. Whereas sort of sitting inside a story and going, oh well, you know, my life's this and nothing's gonna happen to me and you know, the whole like, well, I should be so lucky and all that sort of stuff. You know, little declarations and statements that we say all the time, self-limitation. You know, you look at that and you think, well, now that's going to happen because you're thinking it, and that's your vibration now. You know, I don't want to get too sort of stars and moons about it, but I do think that what you 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 create, what you think, is kind of what you create because you're thinking it. So you're like, well, nothing's going to happen. Nothing good's going to happen around here, mate. Right. Well, that's that then. Nothing good's going to happen around here. But anything good can happen anywhere. You know, we tell ourselves that you know, well, nothing good's going to happen around here, but it does happen. Good things do happen, and you know, when Kevin, the teacher, talks about, you know, some, there's more opportunity for others than there are for, for others, yeah, sure, there, there are. You could be born into certain situations where that can be the case, but there's no reason why, you know, you can't just step outside of the story that's going on around you, whether it's in your, in your mind or in your family or in your neighborhood, your, 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 your city, and just go, you know what? I'm stepping out of this. There's something better. Miracles happen every day, and I'm going to be one of them. You know, and um, I remember a very successful basketball player saying something like that to me once. He said he just looked around and went, "You know what? I'm not. I'm not doing this. I'm not. I'm. Not, I'm. I'm stepping outside of this story." And he became very successful. And um, I believe that if you believe it, anything can happen. But in the but in the meantime. Just think to yourself, well, you know what? It's all right in the meantime. I have got my hands on my arm. Whatever makes me happy is, is going on. I've got that. So thank you. Cheers. Appreciate it very much. But I wouldn't mind a bit of that. Life would be nice if I could have a bit of that and I could be of service as well. And then you do that and then um, you feel better. And then you might make a few other people feel better as well along the way. So, you know, anything's possible, isn't it? If you want it to be. One other interview that I thought was interesting. God, did I sound like Billy Graham or something? Was that a bit much? <laughs> no, no, no. I, I get it because a lot of Do times I, mean? I, I, I was reading something on Quora the other day God. that so much bad stuff happens sometimes when you're on a downturn and then you add alcohol to that whole thing and then the whole thing blows up and people were talking about losing their jobs and how it was like a spiral of negativity. And, and I do yeah. see that, it's just hard to see it when you're in that moment, I, I get it. It is hard very, to see it, you yeah. know. And it, I'm not saying it's easy to just sort of go, no, I, I, I hear what you're saying. I don't know, when I first came to Los Angeles, people were like, oh, it's very difficult, it's very competitive and all the rest of it. And I was thinking, well, I just happened to be here because of circumstance. And I was like, well, you know, yeah, okay, it's competitive and difficult and what have you, of course. But anyway, I'm here now, so should we, you know, let's see what we can go on. Oh, is that Beverly Hills? You know, just enjoy the experience, you know what I mean? Just see, there's always something good to experience around you. You know, there's always something good somewhere. Let's, let's just look at that. How do you feel about Hollywood after making this documentary? Um, Hollywood is this place where stories are told, right? And we all love to hear stories. We've been doing it since we were cavemen, sitting around, you know, the campfire and, you know, exchanging stories. And, you know, they're, they're, they're designed to, to, to learn from, raise our consciousness, you know, um, to learn from. And, um, Hollywood's a place where they tell those stories on whatever scale or other, you know. Um, and I personally find that if I'm involved in any of those stories as an actor, which I find myself being, um, you know, that's a wonderful opportunity and a chance to play and, you know, enjoy and, and hopefully you know, serve that script, serve that character uh, uh, as best I can. But for me, I find that, you know, journeys like uh, this American journey with the documentary, you know, that's when I really sort of see humanity, do you know what I mean? Whether it's American humanity, or if I go to India and I see Indian people living in a certain way, or Africa or China or any of these places. And I personally like to get out there where, you know, everyday sort of folks are living in everyday ways. Um, and also finding a lot more happiness than one might sort of think exists in, you know, poor places. I remember going to Mali once, which is the third poorest place in the world, and I've never seen so much smiley, happy faces. You can walk around Beverly Hills and then you wait all day for somebody to smile, you know, and there's a 
there's a difference going on there. Um, without criticizing any situation or other, but you know, one can't help but notice these things. And I just find that the more I travel around um, and the more people that I'm exposed to, the more humanity I'm exposed to. So if I'm gonna be popped into, you know, placed into one of these Hollywood stories or TV shows or films or whatever, then if I've experienced a bit more humanity from some far flung places, then maybe I'm a little bit more uh, better equipped to, to uh, portray that character in some way or other, you know? Um, I would hope so. And so for me, it's, um, it's important, you know, not just to sort of stay in little bubbles, you know, in Hollywood or, you know, Manhattan or, or London or whatever. It's important for me personally to sort of get out there and see what's going on in the world. And then when all these stories in Hollywood are told, you're like, oh yeah, I saw something like that once. Yeah, I can bring that into it now. And hopefully do a slightly better job.